lawyer, a realtor, a mother, and a student. Put them together, what do you got? Girlfriends. Girlfriends was centered around four African-American women who came together as friends and to navigate single life in the city. No, not that city. That one. One of the reasons why I love this show is that I had a premise that I was looking for. A strong, tight-knit group of women that were successful, intelligent, stylish, sophisticated, strong, and sexy. Sex in the City was my first real taste of watching fiery women on screen, living the type of life that I wanted. Girlfriends took that to a whole new level because not only did it give me that female-centric formula that I was looking for, it gave us all the self-representation that we craved and we didn't even know that we needed. The show is the brainchild of Mara Brock Akil, a television legend that brought other gems to our living rooms like The Game, Black Lightning, and Bearing Mary Jane. Mara was born in Los Angeles and raised in Kansas City, Missouri. Akil attended Northwestern University, where she pledged Delta Sigma Theta sorority, graduating with a degree in journalism. She set aside the anchor's desk when she moved back to her birthplace, Los Angeles, to pursue a career in television. The gamble was soon take off as she cut her teeth on notable top shows like The Jamie Foxx Show and Moesha. It was during her time working on Moesha that Mara began to develop the bones of what would later become Girlfriends. Akil used inspiration from her own life to craft a show about four intelligent and successful Black women. I did it for self-serving reasons, she said. I wanted to see myself. Girlfriends was built around her life and that of her friends and closest associates. The goal was to help remove stigmas from images of Black women on television and to give representation that was not only more positive, but also a lot more real. There weren't any shows at this time showing groups of African-American women as friends navigating life, love, and lucrative careers, going to brunch, dating on the weekends, climbing the corporate ladder. It was an uphill battle for Mara to be able to convince a major network in her same vision. She found a partner with connections and a shared vision in Kelsey Grammer. This was the last piece of the puzzle to finally get the show off the ground. Girlfriends premiered on UPN Network on September 11, 2000. Girlfriends made sure to showcase a different version of the Black woman than we were used to seeing. Strong, successful, and with dimension. She wasn't just a round away girl with a neck twist angry at the sun rising. She was layered. She had a range of emotions. She had ups and downs. These were four different Black women who the audience could find someone or even more than one to connect with. Joan is the lawyer. Tracy Ellis Ross owned the role of Joan Clayton, the successful corporate lawyer. Always trying to bring everyone together, Joan was the anchor of the show. Joan drives the series and has the most dramatic character development of the cast. Joan is the woman that wants it all. The career, the friends, the man, and a closet full of badass shoes. Joan loves hard and is constantly creating corners for herself but also fights for herself and for her girlfriends. She is the glue that holds the women together. And while Joan is constantly over-involved in her friends' lives, you understand that every move she makes is out of her loyalty and unconditional love for each and every person she encounters. Maya is the mother turned author. Golden Brooks is amazing as Maya Wilkes. Maya starts the show as the married assistant to Joan. The ladies became close friends. Maya fits in perfectly as the tell it like it is friend. Maya is always the first one to check someone when they are doing way too much with her signature catchphrase. 
Maya's path is one that a lot of women have and can relate to. Even when we arrive at a life that we thought we desired, it's okay to want more. She grew on the show as the married family matriarch who worked as Joan's assistant to a single woman defining her path to a published author. But where Maya will be the first to read you your rights, she will also move mountains for you. Oh, okay. Hmm? Lynn? Stunning. Thanks, you guys. Ooh. Hey, guys, sorry it took a little extra time, but I do not like to use the bathroom at the movie. Oh, hell no. Have a stroke? Did, 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 did she have a stroke? No, 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 no. no. Oh. Tony had Botox. What? She Botox. Mm -hmm. Chad, now you did it. Now you live with it. Now lift your head up. Let, let me, let me. See. Oh my god. Um. Now just wait a minute. Now maybe we could, um, maybe we could, we could scotch tape the other side up. Oh, no. Have you thought of auditioning for the Kabuki? Tony is the realtor. Jill Jones played the hell out of Tony Child, the self-absorbed, success-driven realtor who was the embodiment of the word bougie. While other characters, especially Black high-maintenance women, can be cold, calculating, and add to the angry Black woman stereotype, Tony is layered and shows the audience depth despite her all about me attitude. The show was skillfully able to layer a storyline to show what many may seem like narcissism, but is actually passion and drive with a hint of confidence, just a hint. We just weren't used to seeing it packaged that way. Jill Jones left the show in 2006 after co-starring in the first six seasons to pursue her film career. In an interview on leaving the show, she commented, For me in my career, my contract was up. And after six seasons, and there's a whole film world that I wanted to experience. And that's what I've been doing. I think if Tony came back to the show, there would be so much more to write and much more to bring. That's a testament to how great Mara and the rest of the writers are. The series continued with the remaining cast for the final two seasons of the show different from all the ladies who have taken the 405 and haven't arrived. Tony? Oh, it's real simple. You decide to do it and you do it. Hmm. And I'm glad you asked that. Everyone wants to hear an and, but there's no and. You decide you want to be successful, you get off your ass and you do it. And by do it, I don't mean thinking you're going to come down here to this seminar and somebody's going to give you a job because it ain't going to happen, so don't ask. <laughs> That's right, you gotta work for it. <laughs> Lynn Searcy, played by Persia White, was the bohemian flower child who was into spoken mic night, poetry, and catching degrees as if they were Pokemon. Lynn went from bouncing around on her friends' couches, unsure of her path in life and what degree she was going to start using, to becoming a documentary filmmaker. Lynn's free spirit was refreshing, and she was undoubtedly educated, but was able to represent a character that even as an adult needed to find themselves. Her unapologetic self-assuredness was a breath of fresh air, and she showed a woman who was comfortable with her sexuality by knowing what she wants and not being afraid to go after it. You can never really do enough to raise awareness for the empire. Oh, Merit. Um, I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. I just figured since you hadn't left that you wanted to. Well, yeah, but another reason I haven't left is because my legs are stuck. <sighs> mm. Mm. Um, well, well, before this goes too far, um, I have kind of an awkward question to ask you. I got protection. So do I. <laughs> but before it goes any further, I, I kind of need to see some ID. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, my career's blowing up. I do not need a scandal. <laughs> yep. 
checks out. <laughs> and we can't forget about the token male, William, played by the hilarious Reggie Hayes. The show is all encompassing with episodes that showcased everything from dating, friendships, family, and office life to the more provocative subjects. Girlfriends dived into interracial relationships and the view from the other way around when a black woman dates a white man. The internal and external conflict that real people go through in our culture when faced with racism and everyday microaggressions, even in the modern world. Lynn's road to self-discovery as she found her birth mother and got a hard lesson not only in the social and cultural identity that comes with being biracial, but also encountering mental health challenges, racism, and things that we don't talk about regularly on television. I love watching these women do everything from going out to lunch, to getting dressed to go out, to chilling in the hot tub with a glass of red wine. The show ran for eight seasons, but unfortunately for its dedicated audience, became a casualty of the Writers Guild of America strike ultimately canceling the show in 2008, with no formal series finale or even resolution of current storylines. There were rumors of a girlfriend's movie, but never came to pass and was never officially confirmed. That was 12 years ago, and the ladies have since moved on to different projects. Girlfriends is that show that you laugh with, you cry with, and you gain four new friends in your head and your heart. It teaches us that no matter what happens in our lives, it's such a great idea to have girlfriends around. Girlfriends that hold you dear and will do anything for you. And if anyone tried to come between you and your day one friend, just channel your Anamaya Wilkes and tell them. We hope you enjoyed this episode of The Breakdown. I loved going back and revisiting some of the episodes of Girlfriends. This is one of my favorite shows coming up. Take a walk down memory lane yourself and revisit or even get to know the ladies for the first time with watching syndicated episodes available now on CW Seed. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of The Breakdown. Keep checking back each week for more great content that we have on the blog. Let us know what's on your mind and it may turn into a blog. Make sure you stop by our Patreon to become a member, support our content, and get some really great exclusives. We also have our weekly podcast, which we will also be posting episodes of The Breakdown on. If you're looking for a more visual way to watch The Breakdown, make sure you head over to our YouTube page. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell so you can be notified when new videos are available. Make sure you come back and check back on the site for even more content every single day. There's new merch available for purchase. There's new businesses that we're spotlighting, new books that we're reading, and new events that we're connecting with each other on. We'll see you there at mickeyjking.com.